Alrighty, everybody, it is September 1st. We are now nine days from the climatological peak of the hurricane season, and if you haven't been doing so, especially to my new viewers out there, I would recommend politely that you start to tune in for these recurring tropical updates as we move through time between now and the back end of October to tell you the truth. Some of the recent trends I've been seeing, as well as some of the noise, both reliable and not so reliable, but more so the reliable noise I've been seeing perking up across social media from other reliable weather sources. Things and trends are pointing towards a fairly active phase coming for the next few weeks, if not several weeks. So if you are brand new to the channel, thank you so much for taking some time out of your Monday. Happy Labor Day, everybody, at that. For joining me here in the Weather Center, taking some time out of your holiday weekend to tune in for your latest tropical weather outlook. And a big hello to all of my viewers who've been with me not only since 2023, but those of you who've been sticking around since 24 up until now. Now, it looks like we're doing it all over again. If you are around for the 2024 hurricane season, then hold on to your butts because I really do think we may not see a total copy and paste, but it's going to be very very similar in a variety of ways. And so with that being said, give that like button a little nudge. I want all of you right now to nudge that like button. It takes a split second. Please, if you could be so kind, consider clicking that subscribe button. Let's share this information for those you believe would benefit from it and drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Give me some questions. Give me your thoughts. I want to have a conversation with you all, especially as we tread lightly into some of the signals and the things we're watching ahead. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to get right into this. So we already have a code orange out there. This is a tropical wave that has finally splashed down off the coast of Africa, given a 10% chance over the next 48 hours of tropical development and up to a 50% now over the next seven days. When I was at work over the weekend doing our morning shows, I thought National Hurricane Center would be a little more eager to bump these formation chances up, but that's neither here nor there. We're starting to see them incrementally tick up, and notice we're starting to bend them back towards the west. So there is a pretty dominant fork in the road with this feature. I'm not saying the United States really has to be worried just yet, although some of the more recent model iterations do suggest a close shave to the mid-Atlantic and especially the northeast United States up towards Nova Scotia and the remainder of Atlantic Canada. You may want to watch this one. This could be kind of similar to what we saw in 2023 with Hurricane Lee. Ensembles are definitely favoring a bit more of a westward track before a Attempting to recurve up the eastern seaboard, and I want to emphasize even more so the Leeward Islands and the Greater Antilles, Puerto Rico, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, the Turks and Caicos. All of you down in this general corner of the world should probably just keep your eyes on this one. And then we also have a couple of trailing waves back behind this that may try to survive the wave breaking event that we're going to see the splashing and the crashing down of our dry, stable air from up north down into the MD. Over the last few days since we last met last Friday, I'm starting to see a bit of a different taste in the models. They're starting to show a totally different trend, and it makes sense. Climatologically speaking, we're now into that most optimal phase of the hurricane season to where you really need to have significant detriments, really bad conditions out there for waves to not at least attempt to try to spin up. And I think that's what our models are finally latching onto alongside the passage of a Kelvin wave and our MJO that's going to be rocking here with us in about 12 more days, give or take. You switch over to your goes east water vapor shot. We're looking at the actual tropical Atlantic. Now, don't get it twisted. We're going to talk about this area here very soon. I want to keep your eyes on the west side of the map here. We'll get there, though. Stick with me to the end of the video. I've got a lot to cover. Starting to kind of feel like I'm falling under the weather, but I'm still going to get you the information because there's an abundance of stuff that I want to talk to you all about today. So we're going to talk West Caribbean Gulf momentarily, but here is our tropical wave and our enormous surge of tropical moisture coming off of Africa. A very different picture than what our models had been depicting for the last several days. And I've been having a lot of background conversations as to why our models were 
very finicky with trying to develop things, especially the likes of the GFS, the Canadian model, the Euro AI model. Now, every single one of our models, for example, especially with this leading wave at a 10 for 50 split right now, do go up to hurricane strength, if not major hurricane strength. So there's unanimous agreement. We're going to see development. This will likely take on our next name, Gabrielle. And then shortly after that, we've got Umberto, which I believe we're probably going to also realize within the next two weeks, give or take. And then we've got Imelda. That's the one uh, you know, uh, just like I said, stick with me. Stick with me. And then I also want to take us closer to home if you are a Central Floridian. We've had this rogue area of low pressure kind of hugging the coastline of eastern Florida. It meandered closer to the Brevard Space Coast area earlier this morning, I noticed. But late last night, I noticed that we also really trended down in our overall rain coverage that we were anticipating, especially for Lake Orange, Osceola, and Polk, southern Brevard. I thought we would see a lot more rainfall throughout the mid-sections of the day, but we actually trended way down after about 2, 3 o'clock, and we very quickly rebounded with this northeasterly flow in association with this low pressure trying to spin up. So I thought this was very interesting. We've got a lot of westerly shear out there, though. If you look at the upper level Cirrus on the satellite here, lots of wind shear. If there were any kind of, quote, convection, notice the air quotes here associated with this spin. It's way off towards the east of it, very heavily displaced. But I wanted to point this out, though, because if you notice here in Florida, if you are a Floridian watching with me, first off, let me know in the comments where it is you're watching from. But I bet if you ventured out today for the holiday, you've probably dealt with some pockets of heavier rainfall rapidly moving from the north to the south. I'm talking racing along because of the gradient around this low, but it's also pretty windy out there. It definitely kind of feels low pressure slash tropical-esque out there. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so this is the elephant in the room, and it's lighting up across all of social media. And if you've been following this channel you heard it here first, I guarantee it, and I can say that confidently. My old folks, my OGs out there, drop that in the comments section. We've been talking about this for a while, since about May, June, July, that we'd be retrograding back into a La Nina. It's happening. I can say that full-heartedly. It's happening. We have our favorable setup in the maritime continent, so I'll walk you through it thermodynamically. Notice this large pocket of warmer anomalies loaded up off the southeast coast of Russia, China, Indonesia, and Thailand out there, south of Japan as well. This is your maritime region if we were talking about it from an MJO large-scale perspective. As a result, thermodynamically, we've had a lot of upper divergence going on out there which has helped to kind of suppress the Atlantic here and there. That's why we've needed a little nudge from the MJO and these tropical pulses through the equator every now and again, and that's what we're waiting for right now. But on top of that, where we're starting to see the change is look at our ENSO regions here. So because of all that lift that's in the Western Pacific, we have seen an increase in our low-level easterly winds, the trade winds, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So with everything that's going up, you have your strong westerly winds high up in the atmosphere. And then because you have all that lift opening up a gap down towards the surface of the ocean, you got to fill that in somehow. And so our trade winds are really accelerating. And our 3.4, I'm not even going to list all the individual regions. All of them have successfully really dipped down in terms of the temperatures. Let me go ahead and show you that real quick. I had it pulled up. I think I accidentally closed it. Let's go back to cyclonic weather, the SST analysis. Look at this. This is your 3.4. And if you notice, this is the one. There's the 0.5. We are below that. Kind of a bit of a rebound, but obviously this oscillates. So while this isn't a bona fide La Nina setup just yet, because it's going to take more than just dipping below the 0.5 negative in terms of your temperature anomaly, talking the surface of the ocean's temperature in relation to the average. It's going to take a little more. Obviously, there's always that hangover, that little bit of a lag, if you will. But the fact that we have quickly blossomed into La Nina characteristics from about mid-July all the way through to the middle portions of August, we have been in a textbook cool neutral. Now we have dropped even further, and I think because of the fact that we've seen successive cooling in the areas most susceptible to building this La Nina phenomena, coupled with that extreme, that extensive worth in the northwest and western Pacific and the fact that Aaron threw us a bone and opened up that positive AMO, that warm horseshoe that you can see right in through here, 
me pull up the anomalies once again, and we'll go to the United, not the United, but we'll go to the North Atlantic, and look at that. That's about as favorable as you can get. The tropics are warm. The lower subtropics are warm. The Caribbean and close to home are warm. And we have cool subtropics, a cool North Atlantic, cool mid-latitude. So thermodynamically, give it a little more time. That's my famous last words for this hurricane season. Give it a little more time. And I think we are going to catch up. And I hate to say it, it might not be the most positive of catching up if you've been slacking on watching the hurricane season. That's why I respectfully and politely mentioned at the very start of this video, this is probably the point where you want to just, you know, at least keep an eye open. There's no imminent threats. Let me go ahead and air that out. No imminent threats. The Leeward Islands, the Greater Antilles, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, we are going to have to watch that approaching wave, but right now there aren't any imminent threats, but there's a catch. There is always a catch. We also got our latest seasonal data from the CANSIPs. Today is September 1st, and if you look at the precip anomalies, courtesy of the CANSIPs climate model, this is, you know, it kind of explains itself. I really don't have to spend very much time here. On top of that, when you come over to the actual sea surface temperature anomalies, the forecast, this is valid for September this current month. You go forward to October and then into November, and we're not done cooling the anomalies out there in the tropical Pacific. So as we load up more warmth in the West Pacific, load up more of a negative Indian Ocean dipole where we favor cooler waters closer to the east coast of Africa, the Buddha, Saudi Arabia, and we continue to see the successive warming that we have seen in the Atlantic, check this out. The MDR is also still warming up. Let me switch it over here so you can see the full chart. There you go. We're almost to a full degree above average once again in the Atlantic MDR. And don't even get me started on the ocean heat content. I'm sure somebody else out there will have that on full display. But for the sake of time, we're just going to keep rocking here. We also have this. So I have the timestamp stopped right at the very end of this loop. This is Saturday, September 13th. I know this is still just inside two weeks away, but the reason I bring this up is this. We've been talking about it for a few tropical updates. I've gotten some trolling comments, as to be expected, part of the course, but now our models are really latching on to the gyre. Our models are really starting to latch onto the gyre and notice the multiple signals out here through the greater tropical Atlantic getting very close to the Lesser Antilles and the Eastern Greater Antilles on the north side of the Caribbean islands. Still a huge fanning out effect. This is still something we want to watch if you reside on the east coast of the United States. Not too concerned about Florida, Georgia, or South Carolina for now, but again, just like with Hurricane Aaron from North Carolina all the way up to Eastern Canada, at least keep your eyes on this for the time being. We're going to spend a lot of time with it, and then we have successive tropical waves that our models are starting to latch onto. But these are your 12Z Euro ensembles. And before you really start to look at the spaghetti that's flying everywhere through the MDR, the Eastern Atlantic, I want you to look where my box is right here. I'll draw a little box and then I will get my face out of the way so you all can rock with me through the loop. So this is about five days from now. Notice we already have a healthy signal out there in the MDR. That's to be expected. I am very confident this is going to be Tropical Storm Gabrielle within the next three to five days without question. As you go beyond the seven-day mark and then out to about the 10-day mark, notice the Western Caribbean. First off, we have some very, very strong members associated with our tropical wave, a massive shift in comparison to what we were discussing this time last week. But then as you continue the loop, we're seeing a very, very familiar sight down there in the Western Caribbean near the Yucatan and the Yucatan Channel. And again, like I've mentioned before, not a total copy and paste of 2024, but given how fast things evolved last hurricane season, especially this time last year was when I started with the studio. Four more days and I will hit my one-year anniversary, and it's very eerie that just as I was getting started with them, that's exactly when the signal to our south from the Gulf and from Florida started to percolate down there. And then we ended up with Hurricane Helene. So call it hype, call it whatever you want. I'm calling it situational awareness. We've seen this many times before, so it really deserves that we pay attention to it. And I'm going to give you these recurring updates on a regular basis, regardless of how I'm feeling physically, because I think it's game time. I think this is the point where we're going to start to see 
things trickling over to a more boil look as opposed to just a slow simmer. You can see I have the GFS all the way, the ensembles anyway, fast forwarded all the way to the end of the loop, and you can see the two signals, the one down in the Western Caribbean. This one fans out a lot more, and that's kind of typical for the GFS. The GFS loves to just spread everything out when it comes to the gyre because at the end of the day, the gyre in of itself is simply a large-scale, slow-spinning, counterclockwise, low pressure down there across Central America. It's a matter of what types of energy get stuck up in the gyre and where they should shoot out. That's what really dictates if your tropical system is going to develop and where it's going to go. So regardless, the trends on the euro are very interesting. Let me take you back to zero Z as well. Zero Z, again, you know, from zero yesterday, 12 yesterday to zero very early this morning, all of the runs of the euro have been showing something. If you look down there in the Western Gulf, almost looks similar to what we saw very, very early Milton. Just to throw a quick analog out there, some stuff brewing in the Bay of Campeche before shooting back towards the east. The key takeaway here is before I start getting the comments or before I start having you ask the questions of where's it going, where's it going, where's it going, we don't quite know yet. It's just a small signal, but my eyes are wide open because we've seen how these signals can evolve fairly quickly. They love to put their foot down on the throttle at a moment's notice, and we need to be ready to do the same. So that's all this video is about. Name of the game is preparedness. We have to keep our head on a swivel and stay frosty, as they like to say out there. On top of that, if you look at your AI ensembles, the AI model definitely seems to favor not only our first area of interest taking a bit of a further track towards the west, but then you can see two additional signals back behind that just in time for the passage of our MJO. Here is the latest look at our velocity anomalies, courtesy of the Euro, valid as of today, September 1st, and it kind of self-explanatory once again. I won't beat this like a dead horse. Right after September 11th, which is what I've been airing out on the channel for a while now, so if you've been paying attention, a big thanks to you sincerely for the support and for trusting me with this information to provide it to you, but there you go. Large pocket of favorable conditions from just after September 11th all the way out to the midsections of October, and that's where I'm going to leave you because I can already feel my throat kind of getting a little raspy, and I need, like I said, I need to preserve my energy because I think it's going to be a very busy next month and a half, if not more than that. So I hope you all have had a spectacular holiday weekend. I hope the weekend treated you great. I hope you managed to dodge any of the bad or inclement weather out there that we've been experiencing, not only in Florida, but the rest of the Southeast for a little while now. And I will probably try to find a way to go live tomorrow. If tonight... 0Z and then 12Z again tomorrow afternoon shows the exact same type of signal, just ensembles beginning to pop off close to home like that. I'm going live tomorrow, and you can take that to the bank. If not, I'll, lo I'll throw a post out there. I'll let you know if we are or not, but if you see a post from me with the ensembles and everything lighting up down there, that familiar territory, we're going live, and I look forward to talking with each and every one of you. But until then, have a wonderful rest of your Monday. Stay safe out there. We'll talk to you soon. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.